Hey folks, it's Maxi here and welcome to another TW 2020 episode. You join us for episode 2 of our Impact Revival save, where everything is going to go completely a different way in a few months. But for now, we have the current Impact roster. It was a decent first show, and we're hoping we can follow up here and have another good show, basically taking us to final resolution, where we can start bringing in some new signings. So I'll start this one. With the world's most dangerous tag team in action, that is, of course, Sammy Callahan and Ken Shamrock. They just talk about how dominant Shamrock's victory was last week and then how he just destroyed Caleb Conley as well. They talk about how Don Callis is constantly saying that new people are going to come in and Impact is going to have a revival. Not on their watch. They're going to take anyone that steps into the Impact right, uh, arena or the Impact Zone. We'll go with that. Yeah, they're going to take them out. So, just a 46 promo. Sammy benefited from going off strict. Or, 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 or script, even. Words are hard at midnight. And um, Ken Shamrock struggled. So, overall, 46. Happy with that. Then it's Sammy in action. And Sammy took on Hernandez. And it was a good win for him. He wins in 12.25 with the headlock driver. So, a good win for Sammy Callahan. 45 rated match. We're obviously going to be putting over the younger talents. It's good to have like Sir Hernandez, Tommy Dreamer, James Storm all about, but they've got to be put. They've got to be doing the job uh, and putting people over. So a good win for Callahan, building some momentum up for him. And after it, the world's most dangerous tag team just destroy Hernandez. So that's Caleb Conley out, and now Hernandez gets a beat down. So getting some more heat on them in a 40 rated segment. They had a match that had a decent reaction from the crowd, but subpar wrestling. AC Romero defeated Glenn Gilberti, or the former Disco Inferno, in 7.56 with a rock bottom. Just a 36 here. I don't know what it is. I see AC Romero and I just think, there's something about this guy. So I'm actually going to give him a really, really good push. So a good victory for AC Romero. And after that, I can confirm that with Don Callis just basically saying, you know what, kid? As AC makes his way back to the... Up to the top of the ramp, he just says, there's something about him. So basically, this segment elaborates what I've just said there. That Don Callis, the CEO of Impact Wrestling, says there's, there's potential in this guy, and I like it. Moving along, we have a promo from Diona Peruso, your Knockouts Champion, and Kimberly. It's just basically saying they're far too good for the Knockouts Tag Team Division, and they'll be doing everything they can to ensure Diona remains knockouts champion. Kimberly agrees. She's still a baby face in this frustratingly, so we'll need to bear with that just now until it lets us change her because it, I was wanting to turn her straight away but it says the turn was quite recent so I don't want to kill her momentum straight off the bat so we'll hold off a bit there. Kimberly was in action. She took on Killer Kelly and another kind of match to expose Killer Kelly to an American audience and a terrible wrestling and non-existent crowd heat as Kimberly defeats Killer Kelly in 807 with the palm strike. So 20 or 80 match up, I believe I made this storytelling. That would make sense. Yep, storytelling match. And because it's two baby faces because Kimberly, we need to wait before turning. But a good victory anyway for Kimberly. And it shows that she'll be a, a steady hand in the corner of Diona Peruzzo. Then had a match for the X Division Championship. How times have changed. And it was about the dead of much heat and terrible wrestling. As Rohit Raju defeated Swago in 706 with Dragon Wings. This was his sixth defence of the Impact X Division title, first in game. I don't know a lot about uh, Raju, if I'm being honest, that's someone I'll, I'll need to really look up the, the Desi Hit Squad. But I just want to kind of create this idea that they're kind of mocking the X Division Championship, and now with the high calibre athlete that I'm looking to bring in, we make that a hell of a division. But a 32 rated match up there as Swago takes the L. And after the matchup, Swaggle just gets beaten down. More heat on Raju in a 30 rated segment. Then had a decent reaction from the crowd but subpar wrestling as Rhino defeats Adam Fornstow in 719 with a pile driver. This was a 39. Unfortunately Rhino was off his game. I want to build up Rhino and Heath Slater or Heath with their relationship but I do like the idea a Reno scum and this, uh, I just love the look of that big, is it Lester the Legend? They're just The unique look is very good, so I think we're going to have them in a feud in a sense, but here Rhino 
picks up the victory in a 39 rated match. Moving along, we had the other semi final of the Knockouts Tag Team Championship Tournament. And had the terrible matchup Team Sea Stars defeated Sa uh, Tasha Steele and Kier, uh, Kira Hogan in 751 when Ashley Vox pinned Tasha Steele's with a fish on a hook. 29. Team Sea Stars, I'm probably going to sign them up full time, of course. They two, Killer Kelly and Renee Michelle, are all signed up to one month deals. So I'll probably extend them, just give as much depth to the knockouts division as I can. Uh, and yeah, as I say, hopefully bring in some more single athletes, more tag teams, to put some more depth into our divisions once we get a bit more money. So that's quite good. Good victory for them, uh, and a good opportunity for them on a, on a bigger stage in this instance. It was only a 29 though, and after it we obviously had the stare down between them, with Taya Valkyrie and Tenille Dashwood, of course. These two teams will collide for the Knockouts Tag Team Championships at Final Resolution, or pay-per-view that will be in episode number 5. We then had more shenanigans from Eric Young and Joe Doring. Just Eric Young saying, I'm still waiting on Rich Swan. He's obviously just going to get to the stage, he doesn't show up, and then he's going to have to forfeit the World Championship to me. So hopefully again, being in the spotlight with Eric Young is improving the overness of Joe Doring. I'll be intrigued to see... By the end of the taping block, if Joe Doring has a very big increase in popularity, because I think he's like 6 to start with, so we can get even that to like 12, 15, I'll consider it a success. Eric Young's in action, he took on Willie Mack, he wins in 12, 15 with a spiked pile driver. A 48 overall, Willie Mack with a better performance due to Eric Young being off his game, but it's some more heat for the former world champion and after it he tries to beat down Willie Mack him and Joe Doring and the save is made by the returning Rich Swan. so he is going to be helping out Willie Mack here, he chases off Eric Young and Joe Doring the numbers are evenly matched so we should be going a way where we have a feud between Swan and Mack against Young and Doring and as I say it will be a filler just now as I say I do want to get a lot more bigger names in the Impact World title picture. In our main event, we've seen a match between the Good Brothers and the North. We had Carol Anderson representing the Good Brothers with Josh Alexander representing the North. I felt these two would mesh well, which would give us a good main event, which will be title rated, so that should help us gain pop. And in a decent matchup, it was Carol Anderson who defeated Josh Alexander. And 14.39 with the Anderson Spinebuster. 50 is good. Two guys with good performances. Basically, really, really happy with that. Made that a steal the show match as well. So both guys were penalised for stamina. But a very good performance. Considering how over the company is at this time. And we finished the show. Where Don Callis confirms. At final resolution, we will see the Impact Tag Team Championships. Not only just on the line, but on the line in the main event. So I'm actually going to try this. I'm going to try and push our tag division. Is the main event stronger than our world title picture? For now. Till we get some bigger names in. So it's going to be triple threat. It's going to be the Good Brothers defending against the Motorcycle Machine Guns. And the North in a three-way tag match. No stipulation at the moment. It's just going to be for the tag belts. But of course we have two more tapings to go before we get to that event. And we finish the show. Overall. We got a 41, I believe that's the same rating as last week. It just increased in our popularity in 21 regions. Again, because of the poor various categories there. Your production department, your broadcasting quality. But again, I want to see the financial situation before I even attempt to go ahead and, and, and try and spend money on that. I don't want to end up having the save dead within 6 weeks, 7 weeks. So that's it for this episode. Thank you very much for tuning in. Hopefully keep them as 10 minute episodes. I don't know of a schedule, I think, by this particular save. Just if and when. So you may get two episodes one week, one episode the next, three episodes the next. I don't know. We'll see what happens. But I hope you're enjoying it, as I say. It's realistic just now. But um, if the money comes in at impact, it is certainly going to be very, very unrealistic. But hopefully we have a good, really good adventure here. AEW and WWE have declared, uh, declared war on each other. So you've got that aspect. And I want to see if we can be that third party in the table. As I say, we will have links to AW and New Japan 
So everybody that wants to wrestle can have an opportunity via here. So cheers for watching, take it easy, and I'll see you soon for the next episode. Bye-bye.